What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Thirsty Thursday. It is week two, part two of the NFL season, and my God, it's already flying by. It's already flying by. We have the Miami Dolphins two-point favorites over the Buffalo Bills. We'll find out, is Josh Allen that uh, MVP that they're already calling him? Or is he going to go ahead and be Josh Allen, the turnover machine tonight? Stay tuned and find out. We'll be live streaming here in about an hour or so uh, with the game. Hope you guys join us as we get ready for the New Orleans Saints. Dak Prescott. Grew up in New Orleans, excuse me, not in New Orleans, in Louisiana. Still has a lot of friends and family that are from Louisiana, even though he went to Mississippi State. Talking to his friends uh, that are New Orleans fans, he grew up in Louisiana, but as a Cowboy fan, his Saints friends have reached out to him this week. I've kind of sent them the emoji and said, go Cowboys. He said they fired back with, who dat? Who dat? Who dat going to beat them Saints? He wrote back, who Dak? The emoji, the finger. All right, that's, that's pretty good. Now, I would love to get a win this week because it would be great to start out the season uh, 2-0, and oh, knowing that we have the Baltimore Ravens, uh, which will be a hands full. Uh, and I don't want to even start thinking about that. I'm actually thinking too far ahead. We got Houdat, and Houdat played really well, destroying the Carolina Panthers. And we'll find out if that was just they were beaten up on uh, just a bad team or is New Orleans for real, along with Derek Carr. But here's my quarterback, press conference-wise. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> mm. choking on it. I want to listen to the press conference. Week one and week two, how much better can this offense be? How much tons. better can y'all be, uh, you know, take a jump? Yeah, tons. Uh, and usually that's when teams make that make that jump, you know, from week one, week two. Um, and just understand, we left a lot of meat out there on the bone. You look at the game, and it was a tell, we, we've said around here, uh, it was a tell of two halves, right? First half, started off slow on the first drive. After that, got it rolling, got some first down, scored. Got some points in the second half. We weren't able to convert on third down, and that was the story for us. We weren't able to put uh, that team away when we had the chance. Defense did a great job of it. Um, but for us, it's about moving forward. One of the best third down teams we've been. Um, so it's about getting back on track on that, uh, converting those. And when you do, you get more plates, more chances at the plate, you get more plays. Uh, and then that's when just the big plays come naturally in our offense. So we've got to convert those third downs and looking uh, to do it this week. From your experience against Dennis Allen and the Saints, what are the keys to succeeding on offense against them? Yeah, as, I mean, as I just said, third downs. I understand they've got a, a multiple of personnel. They're going to give you a bunch of different looks with a bunch of different guys. Um, uh, for us, it's about communicating up front. I understand they're going to try to squeeze us uh, from the line of scrimmage to the top of our routes, whether it's man or zone, um, that they understand that scheme. A lot of veterans there. Um, so for us, it's about um, playing through that, playing through that, being physical with them, um, converting those third downs, and we'll be able to just get more shots at it. And when we could do that, uh, the success just rolls. You've been criticized for not getting this team deeper in the playoffs. Derek Carr's been criticized for not making the playoffs enough <laughs> with the teams he's had. How do you guys as quarterbacks keep getting back up on that proverbial horse and believing the next time? 60 million reasons. I'm worried about beating Derek Carr right now, Derek Carr and the Saints. Uh, we'll worry about the playoffs when we get there, understand what's what's been done in the past. I get that. Um, it's about uh, being present. That's that's a, how I'm able to do that, understand the guys that I have, the team that we have, um, and, and the focus that, that we have right now. And as I said, it's week by week, and that's what it is right now. Dak, not only a 16-game win streak at home, but just when you look back at your whole career, such a good record at AT&T. What do you think is behind that, also a good record on turf? What do you think are the factors that go into your success at home? Uh, I mean, obviously the crowd, you got to give credit to them, uh, yeah. an electric environment, um, us able to just to get out there, as you said, on turf, maybe faster surface, um, just getting our playmakers the ball, allowing them to make plays, um, getting more plays at it. I know our tempo is better when we're at home uh, than on the road, and that's natural. Um, it's easier to get your personnel. It's easier to communicate. Um, so, so all that's going to happen naturally uh, and just 
Got to go get another one. Got to keep it rolling. I know the last time we were in there wasn't a win, so it's about getting that taste out of our mouth and giving our home fans something good to cheer about this Sunday. When you went back to watch the game, was there anything about just your and CD's rapport or anything that happened in the game that you wish would have been a little bit better? Yeah, there's a few things. I think CD would say the same, but um, some things that we probably understood were going to come up uh, when we haven't had the time that we had. Maybe it's... Um, me just not trusting a little bit at the top, um, uh, at the top of my throw or whatever it is, or maybe I'm bleeding a little bit in a route. And um, some of those things are kind of natural. Some of those things are going to always kind of fight with him just being as athletic and as talented as he is and wanting to go make the big play. But um, it's part of it. I'm glad we we're able to do it in a win. And that's my point is when I said we left some meat on the bone is um, able to clean those things up at practice, talk about them, communicate them, um, and understand we've just got to stay disciplined to one another. I know it's another home game, but you're from the boot. Yeah, <laughs> is the Saints is this a little more special? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, their fans are gonna go. be here. I don't know if you got a lot of friends back home or Saints fans, Cowboy fans. Uh this is it, man. I mean, I didn't grow up a Saints fan, um, so so it's a little more fun, I guess you can say. Um, obviously, after we'll get this win, being able to once again. Uh, hold the, the bragging rights. I know I've had some friends reach out to me, you know, I'll be there, I'll be in the end zone. Uh, and I've just kind of sent them the, uh, an emoji um, <laughs> and said, go Cowboys. Uh, and they fired back with, you know, maybe who Dak? And I wrote back, who Dak? Um, so just, um, yeah, good, good playful stuff back and forth. But um, it's an NFL game. It's a great team over there. Just looking to go do our job. What a maker has to play more. It's good maker. The finger. It's good <laughs> he has to play more this week. What's your confidence level in him and what his uh, progress here in year two? Yeah, a lot of confidence in him. I'm excited if he has to step up uh, for him being able to just uh, take, on, take on that responsibility, be a down in and down out tight end. Um, and, and you look at the guy's size, you look at his athletic ability, he can make plays. And sometimes guys like that just need uh, that opportunity and just get thrown into the fire a little bit more than they have. And so I'm excited for him, a lot of confidence in him. Um, if it's his day when we get out there, uh, I'll do my part in making sure that he has a good one. You guys started 2-0 and last year, but that was just the second time out of eight seasons that – you guys have gone 2 and 0 since you've been here. What makes it so hard to to go 2 and 0 to get to win those first two games? It's the NFL. It's hard to win every game. Uh, as I've said before, and I mean, I think everybody knows you can't you don't win games on paper. So um, a lot of times, maybe guys get too teams get too high off of their first win and think that they're better than they are. Um, a good thing in us, you know, understanding we've left a lot of meat on the bone and and, and having the standards that we have in this locker room for our, for our play, offense and defense. Um, so it's about just going out there and building off of what we did last week. Uh, but but particularly us on offense, cleaning up a lot of things and um, just getting better. And I think if we do that, we do that confidently. Um, defense obviously will play the complimentary ball. Uh, we can do it again. Yeah, some of the in practice all the time. How smart of a cornerback is Trayvon? Yeah, very smart. Um, thing about it is he's always talking too. He's always communicating with me, um, asking things about my drop, maybe why I looked him off, or um, always trying to get more knowledge. Um, and sometimes I tell him, you know, I may do this because it's because I know I'm going against you. You know what I mean? Or this or that, where another quarter, quarterback may not do that. Um, but but super, super smart, understands concepts. He was a receiver, so understands stems, breaking points, the yards that those things want to happen, and then he trusts himself. And I think at the end of the day when you play that position and you have the talent that he has, you have to trust yourself. Uh, and he does mm-hmm. that, and that's a lot, that allows him to go make big plays. You've had a serious injury before with, with Jake. You know, he's pushing to play, but do you say anything to him about, hey, it's early in the season, or, or any advice or to him? I know he's a big part of your game, obviously. Yeah, our two injuries are completely different. Right. Um, <laughs> you think? Yeah, the guy's uh, – yeah, I mean, I joke with him more than anything. He's, he's a physical guy. He's an aggressive guy. Um, I can't say – I'm not going to rush him back or urge him uh, – rush him back, but I'm going to urge him. Um, but obviously, it's not my call. He's smart. He's a professional. Um, if he get out, if it was getting out there and he was gimpy, yeah, I would put my two cents in not to, but – um, he understands himself and what he needs to do and, and the value of him to this team and the value of playing a whole healthy season. Did he do week anything today? In week one, the Saints had 12 pressures from players that were playing off the ball. From a preparation standpoint, how do you prepare for pressure to be able to come from? Mike, ahead on that set. Block it up, so. communicate with the guys, make sure we're all on the same page. That includes the receivers, have high responsibilities, um, and be confident in what I see. Um, and I said, just communicate and make sure all 11 know what we're trying to do and accomplish on a play and on the ball snap, execute it. How important is Zeke to that same point? Huge, huge. Zeke, um, all of the running backs, and like I just mentioned with the Hodge, the receivers are as well. They play a huge part in it. So um, watch, watching tape on, on some teams and how they do things, uh, it just 
puts the puts an emphasis on us and the way that we've uh, created that standard of all 11 being on the same page, all everybody playing a part in the in the protection and, and what the pressure may be. And uh, I think last week, honestly, the touchdown throw um, was an example of that. That wasn't about just me. That was about the offensive line. That was about the receivers. Uh, and there's actually a couple more plays where we're able to um, get to different things. And it's because everybody understands our the tough looks that teams are going to present us and how we need to attack them and, and option way to protect ourselves and option B of how to make them pay and score a touchdown and get them out of it. Why have you been so good against the Blitz? I mean, I think it just goes into that, all getting all 11 on the same page, really. Um, a lot of film study. Uh, I know Chase Hazlitt does a great job with the rest of the coaches and getting us our blitz plan, coming up with a plan for what these teams are doing, showing us the problematic looks. Uh, and then, as I said, it's about me watching the film and just being confident in what I see and getting all 11 on the same page and Amen. trusting the guys are going to do their job, and, and they do. Yeah, yeah, Coach McCarthy was saying that he'd, he'd be comfortable from Brandon from 70 yards. How crazy is it to think that? I give him 75, especially oh, indoor. Oh, <laughs> 75. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's a blessing. Not not anything I take for granted. Um, me, I want to take a little bit off his pressure and score touchdowns or off his plate and score touchdowns. You know, rest his uh, leg a little bit. Let him just kick some of those easy um, PATs. And um, we've got to do our part in, in wrestling. But I know if we need him and he's going to he's going to step up and make the play. Isn't yeah. that right, EK? Yeah. Yeah. Tyler, the last question. Tyler Guy, you said he felt he felt he played poorly in week one. Man, I mean. When a guy, a rookie, is grading himself at that scale, how do you yes. communicate with him to make sure that he understands, you know, what he was up against and everything like that? Too? Yeah, when you've got a guy like that who has the standard um, and the expectations for himself, uh, he didn't he didn't play poorly. He may not play to his expectations, and that's that's awesome to hear. Um, but but it's about just continuing to encourage him. There was times that maybe he got edged or um, maybe Miles got got his hands on me or hit me a little bit after the play. Uh, and Tyler, you know, almost apologizing in a sense. And, hey, bro, don't worry about it. Ball got out. Just move on to the next play. So, for me, it's about just telling him to continue to move on. He's growing in each rep. He'll, he'll, he understands that. And um, he's going to be a hell of a player, especially he just keeps those expectations. And it's tough on himself like that. Uh, he's going to be a hell of a player. There you go. That's my quarterback. That's my teammate. And if you say anything about him, it's not fair. See you guys in an hour. Peace out.